What's up everybody? Big Herc 916 and you're tuned in to another edition of Fresh Out. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, share the channel, represent. I got here with my man Chad that, you know, we go back almost to the point when I first got out of prison in 2008. And uh, man, you know, this guy's he's got some interesting stories you know we've been doing a lot of military stories and he was actually in the military for five years and i want to get some of his stuff here for you guys because it's off the chains uh chad man um you know we've been doing a lot of these military stories and i know you've seen some crazy stuff while you were in the navy so uh could you share with our, our fans man um one of the craziest experiences that you had in the military while you were, um, you know, in service? Well, I don't know how much, I, well, first of all, thank you for having me, Marcus. It's really good to be here. Uh, I don't know how crazy or, or, or funny this was, but uh, there was one that's one of my fondest memories, I suppose. We had this guy who was somewhat like a Billy Bob from Varsity Blues, big country boy, <laughs> big fat guy. We're out in Thailand. And uh, I had never been to Thailand, but I heard all the stories from all the old timers about, uh, you know, what to expect out there. Well. We're hanging out. I must have been about 19 years old, and I see one of my buddies sitting there singing and dancing with this girl he met, and I know she's a working girl, and I'm like, well, this guy's romancing her. What the heck is going on, man? <laughs> so the next day, I want to give him a hard time, and I go to see him. I knock on his door. I say, hey, man, how was your night? Oh, Chad, let me tell you something. I met this beautiful girl, and we were singing and dancing. We went out to dinner. We got some steak and lobster. We had this great time. Uh, you know, I brought her back. We started kissing and touching on each other, and, and I pulled her panties down. And she had a penis. And so automatically, I freak out. I'm like, this dude's crazy. Oh, my God, we're going to have an international incident. So I'm waiting to hear where the body's at, you know. I'm like, and I says, so, so what happened? Almost not wanting the answer, yeah. you know. He says, well, God damn, she was a girl all day. I bent him over and busted his cheeks. Oh, oh my God, I lost oh, it. I lost shit. it. I was like, and strangely enough, I was oddly satisfied with that answer versus the, yeah, what I was yeah. expecting to hear from him. Oh, them. shit. Yeah, because they got those, what they call Thai boys. Thai boys, yeah. And they, they actually have beauty pageants out there. And, I mean, it's a, it is legit a lifestyle out there where the men that, that are the the he she's or, yeah, or yeah. you know uh look better than the women out there so you really got to be careful oh shit! because yeah. i know that I, you know i've seen where they have a lot of expats that come out there and you see them posting with these what looks like girls but they're actually little boys young boy i mean young women boys i think so yeah and i think that sometimes these people know and they just want to get their freak on you know I, oh shit. yeah so in thailand man i mean is it really like basically they got a certain area and it's just all that this sex stuff going on like kind of like a yeah. red light district in yeah Amsterdam. yeah and i think a lot of that uh i mean since however long back you know maybe even when the pirates and and the kingdoms and, and <laughs> england you know they pull into port and they had all the bars set up with all the women you know to blow off some steam for these guys so much like that in the modern day with the navy you know you're out to sea on, on a ship that could have all men. Some of them were co-ed. I happened yeah. to be on one that was all men. So you got a lot of pent-up frustration, aggression, you're overworked, you're tired, you haven't had beer, you haven't had a chance to relax. So you hit these ports and you just blow off a bunch of steam. It's almost like an explosion when you get out there. <laughs> so yeah, like Patty, uh, Phuket, these ports you pull into were, were very active with that. But I mean, you go inland uh, or on other coasts and you're going to see more of the beautiful part of Thailand. Yeah. You know? So, um, uh, comparing like Thailand, and I think you, you were also in Dubai? Dubai, yes. So, what is it like over there? Because I know that's predominantly Muslim culture. Mm. As far as like meeting women, you know, pulling up in there, is it very like, do they entertain American men? Because I know like they, their families are very different when it comes to American and the culture and religion. Yeah. Yeah. What's it like over there? Well, when I was out there, it was, uh, it was a lot different than it is now because, uh, you know, this is 99, 2000. So, this is okay. pre September 11. Oh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, you had a TGI Fridays that a, a group of Russian guys maybe ran some girls out of uh, with a piano bar inside and then a, a couple mosques. And it was mostly yeah. just desert. You know, there wasn't it a wasn't lot as of, developed as it is now. Not at all. Not yeah. even close. And, uh, you know, beautiful, beautiful culture. The people were very nice. Uh, as far as women, you know, you go through these port briefings before you pull in anywhere and, and they tell you, hey, you know, don't make prolonged eye contact, you know, be oh, respectful of yeah, these yeah, cultural yeah, differences. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, sure, you know, they're beautiful women, but again, you're not going to try to set yourself up in a country that you have no control in. Exactly. Because I, um, I know now Dubai is known for, 
for the IG models going over there and they getting all kind of stuff done to them. I mean, they getting, you know, they're doing everything for the, for the dollar and they act like, oh, I'm in a private jet. They get over there though and their passports being held and they got to finish these little things to get their money. And so I know Dubai's changed, plus they got all, you know, it's just become like a tourist haven for, you know, people to go over there and, and you know, do whatever they want to do. So it's changed a whole lot prior to that. It was more religious, I think, and strict, huh? I, absolutely, yeah. yeah. You have, uh, you know, I think one of the places, I believe it was called the Gold Souk, and it's a place where they sell uh, intricate gold jewelry, rubies, emeralds, all type of stuff for a really discounted price. Uh, and, and outside of that, it was maybe some shisha bars, and, you know, it was just like walking around, like you'd see on TV, you know, the dirt road paths with these little uh, bizarre tents. Oh, wow, set just up. like in the movies, huh? Just like in the movies, and it <laughs> was not, I, it was nothing like it is now, like the exact opposite of what you see today in Dubai. And, 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 and the funny, like when you said, like the Russian guys, because I heard, like, because um, I remember I had met this girl from, um, uh, I want to say she was from um, Croatia, and she was saying, like, like the girls who want to get make money, they go into like these other countries and they, you know, prostitute or work at the massage parlors. And she was saying like her friend used to party with Omar Gaddafi's sons. So I'm like, damn, they've been around some crazy, some crazy shit. But like the girls, you know, they the four, like they don't their wives. They keep you know in those countries they keep them kind of put away. But these guys go and party at these brothels and they say it's pretty wild. Like all these foreign girls over there basically hooking. You know, so it's like you got a lot of the Eastern European girls going over to some of these spots and they got these little, you know, places where you can release your steam, per se, and uh, do your thing. But, um, man, that's that's pretty wild, man. I mean, did you see a lot of, um, you know, in the Navy, uh, is there a lot of interaction or fraternizing among, like, the male and females? I mean, do females in there, are they pretty much, are they getting loose, Cause, especially the hot ones, or are guys like kind of like trying to, you know, uh, jockey for attention, or how's that interaction with, you know, the co-ed, you know, uh, military? Yeah, 100%. Uh, when you're out there, you know, I, I feel like there might be six to one, men to female out there, you know, male to female. And, uh, you know, like your buddy said on one of your previous interviews, you know, you're going to see a girl back home might be a five, but out there she's a 10 and she's got people throwing themselves at her, you know? Oh, shit. So you have that, you have uh, all type of people on base. I mean, I think in Japan there was a, a prostitution ring on base that got busted oh, amongst, shit. you know, family and or wives while the husbands were underway or deployed. Yeah, they're still I mean, thing. all type of, there's such a, it's such a subculture of society in the military. You have gangs, you have prostitution, you have a Adultery. You have everything you have in prison and in real life, civilian life is happening there too. Didn't you say, I remember we were talking one time, you said when you rolled up, it's like the brothers had their thing and it's like pretty much like you said, clicked up. Yeah. Like what was that? I remember you were telling about that. What was that like, man? You know, when it, you first got in, you said. For me, it was a, it was a shock. You know, I was, uh, I grew up in Texas and then I moved to California. Uh, so, you know, it's very uh, diverse and, and it was kind of mixed up already. So I come out and I'm playing basketball and I get on the court and guys would ask me right away, you know, where are you from? Where are you from? And I said, oh, Cali, like, what does that matter? You know, I'm just playing basketball. Yeah. So I asked my buddy, I said, you know, why they always ask me that? He's like, you're the only white boy out here. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> out here in North Carolina, it's still segregated. And that just blew my mind because this is like 1998. I'm like, are you serious? Like, I mean, it's just you got to be aware that there are so many different happenings in different places you know i feel like we're so sheltered out here you know yeah i mean we're well, growing up on the west coast it's like <clears throat> i grew up on military base and in the bay area so i mean i had filipino uh mexican um white you know we go over there spend the night and you, you you know panamanian you know uh vietnamese everybody was culturally mixed so i never really tripped and then you know get to the pen and it's like oh dude those that's dc over there oh they they from new york you know that's you know, uh, Florida boys, you know, these are cow. I'm like, damn, so you, you got to, you know, you're looking at the table, you're a black dude, but you ain't, don't sit at the wrong black table. You'll get, you know, you get your face sliced up. Mm -hmm. So it's like you said, it's, you know, in California, you know, you think, oh, you know, diversity and this and that. But, you know, when you start branching out, it's a totally different um, cultural experience when you interact with these different people. Um, did you, uh, while you were in, were you pretty much li living a single life or did you? you yeah, know? yeah, when I was in, uh, you know, oh, well, 
to start, you know, I was playing football uh, and uh, had a few recruiting trips, uh, a couple scholarship offers. Uh, I decided on Cal Berkeley. I was like, you know, I'm going to really go to this school. I like it. But at the time, I didn't have a place to stay. I was lucky enough a family took me in until I graduated, gave me some form of stability. Uh, and so when it came time to make that decision to go to college, I was still trying to figure out where I'm going to sleep, where I'm going to eat, you know, how I'm going to become a man. And so I just went and signed up for the military against everybody's wishes. They always try to keep the recruiters away from me so that way I'd pursue my football career. Uh, so once I was 18, I signed up and I didn't tell anybody until three days before it was time for me to leave. Like, hey, I'm out of here. So that way they couldn't make me second yeah, guess yeah. myself. And uh, that's how it started. So I went out there and uh, was really focused on myself being a, a bodybuilder. That was my only way to escape my, my reality back home was by, you know, immersing myself into weights and into uh, healthy eating and, and trying to be some sort of a, a super soldier, you know what I mean, yeah, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. So, you know, at that time, it wasn't really, girls were kind of a, a, a back page for me, you know okay. what I mean? Okay, okay. Yeah, because I know, um, you know, being single, I, you know, a lot of guys in the barracks, they were talking about just, you know, uh, some guys would try to get married to get off base so they can get that extra, you know, uh, supplemental income, you know, that little voucher. And then, um, but, you know, if you were a single guy, it was always cracking because, you know, dudes used to say um, on base, you could always tell when somebody, you know, the guy, when the men were deployed because the base club be packed, you know, and you'd be up in there, you know, literally like, the, you know, oh, yeah, my husband's gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it happens. So they call it uh, Cinderella Liberty. So before for before you get underway, you have to be on your ship midnight the day before. So that way you get all, you know, dressed up, ready to go, and then you're out. Yeah. As soon as it hit about 1130, you knew all the husbands were on the command and we're going to come back for six months. Every one of those wives were at the club. That's uh, crazy, one time man. specifically, right before I left Japan, I was going to my next duty station and uh, they were going to send me to school first. Well, uh, I had broken my ankle playing basketball. And so they put me in this medical holding unit. And so right as my ship was deploying and I'm in this medical hold, I'm like, oh, man, let me just go to the bar, get a drink or so. As soon as I walk in, I see one of the buddies from the ship's wife walk right in with oh. their girls. And I'm like, man, it's scandalous. It's sad, it's sad <laughs> man. But, you know, I feel like it's almost a competition amongst the men and the wives in the military. Like they, they almost tried to outdo each other <clears throat> with, the, with the infidelities. <clears throat> you know, it's funny because... Um, um, we were stationed in Treasure Island, and uh, my my little sister was born in Oakland Old Hospital in the Bay. And I remember, like, my mom, you know, she used to do daycare, so we, you know, like little kids, she always loved looking in the kids in the maternity ward. And you go in there, and um, you see the little babies, and then you see some guy, and he's looking at the baby. And he's looking at the wife, he's looking at the baby. And my mom, when I was young, she's like, that guy right there, he's looking at his baby, like, that baby's a little dark, you know? <laughs> that baby doesn't look like him. So you would have these dudes coming back and it's like, it'd be timing like, damn, okay, I went on a ship eight months, nine months, you know? Is that mine or is that, you know? Oh my God, <laughs> You know, so we'd be much. cracking up, man. So much, man. I don't know if you remember, uh, there's a movie Cat Williams played in and uh, he's in jail and his wife comes over to visit him and brings this little white baby sitting on her lap. She goes, this is your baby. He goes, that is not my baby. That baby is from the mountains of Caucasus. That is a Viking baby. In a similar situation to the yeah. military, man. You saw it a lot. Have you read across, did any of your buddies, like, like you hear stories like, dude, that's, I don't know if that's my kid, or they just take the kid as their own, because I've heard of kids do like, playing it off, but like, man, it's suspect. Yeah, you'd hear things like that, you know. I mean, for the situations like that, I tend to try to stay away from them because, you know, a touchy subject, who knows what kind of reaction you're going to get. Yeah, uh, yeah. We did have a situation, you know, I was uh, stationed in Pearl Harbor. Uh, you know, police officer, they would call in. They'd say, hey, um, can you check on my wife? My wife is uh, from Peru. She doesn't speak the language. I'm deployed. She used to call me every day. Now she's not calling me. So right away, I mean, automatically, what do you think? Oh, girls, you know, she's sleeping with some other guy. The guy's deployed, you know, blah, blah, blah. Same story. We heard it before. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, we'll go do a welfare check. We cruise by, the sprinklers are on, lights are on. I'm like, Nothing looks out of the ordinary, you know? So we're like, yeah, no, let's just go knock. Hopefully we don't catch her in the act, you know? Go in there and, you know, 
unfortunately, right away, you smell a foul odor. So you know some, there's some foul play going on. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and not even busting cheeks, man. I mean, she was busting cheeks. There's two wine glasses, found her in the garage. She had been strangled to death. So oh, what happened shit. is this lady went and told, you know, her, her guy that she was sleeping with, I need to work this out with my husband. You know, we're, we're doing something wrong here. So the guy that she was sleeping around with decided to take it upon himself to strangle her. So not only did this man that was deployed find out that his wife oh. was cheating on him, he found out the man that she was cheating with decided to take her life. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. God, yeah. man. Hey, man, there you have it. Big Herc 916, getting down with Fresh Out, man. Military stories. Stop walking around with a crusty butt, smelly ball sack, and a funky hoo-ha. Big Herc said, wash that ass. Pick you up a t-shirt at freshhouseseries.com. <laughs>